The Standing Committee on Public Accounts has been looking into what exactly is going on at Eskom, and not only that, also the allegations raised by former CEO Andre Dereita. Now, one of the key players in the story of Eskom is the Special Investigating Unit advocate Andy Motivi, head of the Special Investigating Unit, sat down with me earlier on today, and this is what he had to say about what's going on at Eskom. The Special Investigating Unit uh, is tasked with investigating serious allegations of malpractice and as well as corruption, as well as maladministration in the administration of state institutions. Now, a lot of us, uh, in fact, have watched a lot of stories, a lot of money being recovered um, and a lot of allegations flying about. But the biggest story to date has been Eskom, which is still unfolding. And uh, we're trying to get to the bottom of what is going on there and uh, with various other investigations by the SIU and joined by the SIU's head, uh, Advocate Andy Mutibi. Thank you so much for your time, Advocate. No, thank you. Thank you very much uh, for, the, for the opportunity. We and appreciate it. <laughs> and, and, and thank you for coming. We've watched, um, you know, quite a lot of back and forth in scope, and I'm just going to get right into mm. it. We've watched a lot of back and forth in scope from allegations, um, you know, of, of, of sabotage at Eskom. And given what you've also, you know, told scope about what is going on at Eskom, I mean, we've seen even some of, you know, employees being looked at when it comes to mm. issues of conflict of interest. We've seen some issues around sabotage. But the story of Eskom continues. Mm. And, and, and it's one that it doesn't seem to be going away. Why? Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, you know, uh, when, when, I, when I first looked at the years when SIU started to, to investigate uh, at ESCOM, uh, I think the first proclamation there was issued uh, probably way back in, in about 2012 or even before. Uh, but anyway, to, to, to refer to that is that when I looked at the report that was issued at the time, surprisingly, those issues that were reported on are some of the issues that we are still struggling with at the moment. Mm. The issue around conflict of interest. Uh, for us, that is a very, very important aspect to deal with mm. because it's a breeding ground for this corruption where employees of ESCOM would be involved in entities that are doing business with ESCOM. Uh, and as we always say that, you know, our finding has been that uh, we have seen these entities gain business in ESCOM, mm. uh, being, being um, favored, not following process, and simply because these employees have got interest. So if that aspect is not dealt with appropriately, we are likely to see this uh, going on and we expect really management and the board to deal with this uh, situation decisively. It's been a long time though and, and we've known about the issues of, of conflict of interest at ESCOM over time and, and ESCOM has gone through different hands now, be it management, be it the board. Why is it not being resolved? Is it, is it a lack of will or is it because they do not even know where to begin? Uh, you know, as, as, as we have looked at it, um, Honestly, without any other explanation, one could describe it as a deliberate inaction on the part of management or even the board. Uh, so our investigation points out at any particular period where there has been failure to declare interest, conflict of interest, uh, and we seek to ensure that uh, uh, the policy that is applicable in ESCOM, mm -hmm. the extent to which it has not been implemented and ensure that firstly the conflict of interest is detected through appropriate declarations and those that did not declare in a particular period are dealt with. Mm -hmm. We find that that part has really not been done and we would like to ensure that any management executive that was responsible for any particular period and they have not done that action should be taken up against them. There's also another chapter, though, that's unfolding in Eskom before our eyes, um, right now, before Skolpa. It, it looks like you, if, 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 and I'm using this cautiously, you may have been caught off guard 
by some of what has been coming out in recent times. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about some of the allegations that were made by former Eskom CEO under the radar. I'm talking about this, uh, you know, intelligence report mm -hmm. that no one knows where it is um, as to what exactly happened into Eskom. So mm -hmm. would you say you were caught off guard? Am I correct? In, in that kind of reading, because I've listened to some of what you've had to say to Scoba about these latest allegations. Right. Uh, I wouldn't say we were caught off guard because uh, the corruption, we all know mm. that there's allegations of corruption and the extent of the corruption at ESCOM. And we are investigating <clears throat> particular areas uh, in ESCOM. The issue raised by uh, the former CEO, Andre Director, mm. uh, it's really giving sort of more pronouncement around these issues of corruption. He's mentioning issues of syndicates <clears throat> uh, that needs to be looked at. So we are saying uh, if, he's, if he was aware of further areas that needed to be addressed by SIU, he should really have informed us so that we include them in the proclamation scope. Alternatively, go to the Hawks. Sounds uh, like he didn't tell you. He didn't. Uh, we, we are on record as saying in our investigations from time to time we meet with management including him the CEO give him an update of where we are at each particular point of the investigation and at no point did he make these allegations uh, known to us. It sounds like there's another issue though that uh, you, you are also now setting your sights on this particular intelligence report. What about this investigation raises alarm bells for you? Right. Uh, this investigation uh, that he say he, he, dealt, he, de he dealt with or he commissioned, uh, the, the, the alarm bells to us is that for example as we speak now no one has got the report. Uh, the board it? doesn't have that report, uh, management doesn't have that report, uh, mm -hmm. he's, probably, he's probably the only one that has got that report and we have said when we presented at Scopa that uh, we want to probe that area because as you indicated when you opened up one of our focus and which is really you know corruption, maladministration and malpractice. On the maladministration side over and above corruption, we want to look at whether, you know, uh, the former CEO really did not make himself guilty of contravening any policy, any legislation and so on. So that's the part that we will also look at and ensure that we come up with recommendations that would benefit ESCOM and probably other SOEs or government in general, because you don't want CEOs or heads of department going on their own without the knowledge of the accounting authority and going to commission such kind of uh, intelligence gathering which is the preserve legally of the state security agency so we would like to understand that that part and uh, come up with appropriate findings now are you confident that you'll be able to get this report um when you are asking for it because we keep on asking mm. where is this intelligence report and listening to what is coming out of parliament as you say it doesn't look like anyone knows where it is do you think you'll get mutual cooperation to be able to get that report quickly or will you have to use other means and if you do which are those means to be able to get it back right uh the team is already on the ground uh, uh probing that area so uh, uh, it looks like there is knowledge now uh, in terms of who conducted the investigation. Mm. If we don't get the report from Andre Director himself, uh, we will then have to approach the company that did the investigation. Uh, if need be, have to subpoena uh, using our legislative investigative powers so that we get that report. And when it comes to you know this particular issue of, of Eskom and you and I touched on this earlier on that it's been going on for quite some time and a lot of people are really asking themselves why is this issue not getting resolved and just coupled with what we are seeing with rolling blackouts right now there are some who are arguing saying that maybe take us back into the past mm. maybe bring back former Eskom CEO Brian Malefe probably bring back Marcelo Coco to run Eskom because it doesn't look like the problems are going away. What do you say then as the SIU to that? 
Look, as, as I you, uh, you know, we would have a different view on that. And we have a different view uh, because of uh, the evidence we have uncovered uh, during their time uh, <clears throat> and evidence pointing to their involvement uh, in, in, in not ensuring that ESCOM does not experience the rate of the corruption we have, uh, we have uh, uncovered. In one case uh, where they are cited, uh, those individuals and the others, uh, 3.8 billion that we are in court on to recover uh, for losses that ESCOM would have suffered based on what's called state capture uh, uh, incidents. Uh, there's other matters uh, that they have been pointed to by, by evidence. So based on that, we wouldn't really uh, support the call uh, to bring them back uh, uh, because uh, we would like to make sure that uh, you know, they go through the process and uh, they account uh, for, for, for what they have done during their time. And one of the things as we wrap up this particular ESCOM conversation is that, um, you know, and I'm going to get to convictions mm. in just a moment because there's various matters that look at, um, you know, the monies, but we're not seeing movement mm. when it comes to convictions, but we'll get to that. The issue of ESCOM, as you alluded to earlier on, that it looks like it's a deliberate, um, you know, effort to make sure that some of the issues are not being dealt with there. One wonders then, in your view from where you're sitting in the investigations that have been conducted, mm. is it an issue of changing management? Is it an issue of changing systems in ESCOM? Is it an issue of, you know, looking at the people that mm. are there mm. and get being arrested? What does it take for a country like ours to resolve this ESCOM problem? Right. Uh, let me put it this way. Uh, uh, you know, when you manage an organization, any organization, uh, and particularly as big as ESCOM, um, uh, you, you really have to be meticulous in terms of managing processes, people, and probably systems as well. Mm -hmm. right? From our investigations, uh, Bongi, we have found that there has been a failure of people, failure of process, and probably failure of systems. So, what do you do in that regard? Um, again, from the perspective of investigations, those who have been accountable or failed to make sure that uh, you know, all of those areas are looked at, uh, they need to be dealt with and if need be taken out of ESCOM. Uh, and that deals with the issue of whether you need to change management or not. Uh, those that have been responsible for these actions have to be dealt with disciplined to an extent of if need be taken out of ESCOM and bring in people who are determined to ensure that they assist ESCOM to now bring the lights on uh, consistently to the, uh, to, the, to the people of South Africa. So uh, on, on other management processes, which is you know, to ensure that processes are followed, systems and policies, we have found uh, the point I made earlier on, mm. you know, that uh, in some instances you find really uh, that uh, there has been a failure to follow a specific policy. But you know, when you deal with collusion, when you deal with collusion, it's problematic. When you deal with people, unethical people who are occupying senior positions in an organization, right? We have found a lot of collusion. An example, uh, a company called ABB, right? It's a, it's a blue chip international company doing very important technical work at ESCOM. But guess what? Our investigation reveals that they got their contract on a corrupt uh, basis. They themselves have admitted, uh, even to the U.S. authorities, they've admitted that. Uh, at, at home here in South Africa, uh, they have paid, when we made those findings, they paid back uh, 1.5 billion, right? And this is from a SIU outcomes. On the NPA process, We've heard that uh, from an AFU perspective or from a prosecution process, they've, they paid some amounts there as well. But that contract was uh, entered into through a collusion of ESCOM employees, ABB employees. So we're dealing with collusion on such a scale that it affects 
the system and the workability of ESCOM. So we need to point them out, take them out of the system, bring people who are ethical and those who are intended on, on making ESCOM work. One would argue, though, also get people arrested and convicted Indeed. Of, of, of really wrongdoing here. Indeed. Uh, and, and, and that part is also, uh, is also in the process of receiving attention. Uh, we have engaged with the NPA and the memorandum of understanding that we have entered into with them seems really that uh, uh, there's some traction. We have seen the arrests. Some senior people have been arrested in ESCOM. Uh, and I can mention this because it's public. They've appeared in court. Mm. You have seen the uh, state versus Shakudi. Mm. Shakudi was one of the senior managers there uh, whom we found that, uh, you know, he also did, you know, things that are boiled down to criminality.